Um, yes, this is a, a session to discuss how our books travel around the world because of the power of our open license. And let's uh, start with a very short introduction about BookDash. Um, research, just so that everybody understands the context within which we operate and understand um, how our books fit into the bigger picture of the important work that's being done by the different organizations today. So research tells us that every child should own 100 books by the age of five. And that is also our vision statement as BookDash. Um, and the photograph on the right shows you what 100 books look like. It's not a lot. So even though the vision statement sounds excessive and it sounds like abundance, um, actually, when you look at it together, 100 of our books is a very small little bookshelf that a child needs to really get ahead in life. But unfortunately, most of the traditional publishing models aren't designed to create beautiful, cost-effective books for all. So BookDash is a social impact publisher. We aim to create great, affordable children's books um, and then work with other organizations to increase ownership and access and address illiteracy. Sorry, why am I not going down? There we go. So in order to respond to the need of high quality and affordable books, um, BookDash developed an innovative rapid content creation model. There was a session at the Open Publishing Fest yesterday where BookDash's founders, um, Arthur, Michelle and Taryn, told the story about how the organization was established and what sparked it and how uh, the initial um, concept has evolved to what it is today. Um, so that session was also recorded and you would be able to um, to watch it if you're interested. It's on the Open Fest's um, a website. You'll probably be able to find it. Uh, we can also share the link. But basically uh, what, what the model entails is that uh, we have 12 hour bookmaking events, which are called book dashes. Um, we get together 50 creative volunteers in one room and many of you joining this session today have participated in more than one dash or in at least one dash and so you will be able to contribute comments or at least um, uh, observations about the process but um, on the day we put together a writer an illustrator and a designer um, who then start the saturday with nothing except a story idea and who work very hard for 12 hours. And by the end of the day on the Saturday, we have a brand new children's book. And in that room on the day, we have 10 teams usually working, which means that by the end of the day, we have 10 brand new children's books, beautiful African story books that were crea uh, created from scratch um, by very passionate people, giving their work um, on a volunteer basis and making these books that are really a gift to the world. We then use a Creative Commons open license um, to, to govern these books. And the books are published on our website as a first step, where they are free for anyone to read and reuse, adapt, download, translate, do whatever they want to or need to with them. So BookDash is really guided by um, our philosophy of open access. And, and here are three points about the open access. Firstly, our books are published under an open license, as I've just explained. Secondly, our source files are open. They are available on our website for anyone to download and use as they need to. And our model of content creation, the actual BookDash uh, rapid content creation model is also open and has been replicated by organizations around the world. And uh, we've had BookDash inspired events that happened in France, in Laos, in Nigeria, in Angola. Um, so people take our model and then apply it to their context and make books for their own context and own needs. So we continue to be astonished by the power of the open license, which um, extends our reach logarithmically. Um, it allows our books to travel to corners of the world that we've never heard of for uses that we would never have been able to imagine. We, we really are constantly astonished by where our books end up and how they are used. Just a few examples are that um, many, uh, we call them community translations um, happen. And that is where a language community decides that they need more resources in their language, affordable resources, and they then take our books and they translate them and um, 
we love seeing where our books go and we've seen them translated into languages like Farsi, Pashto, Uzbek, Nepali, Lombard. Lombard is a minority language where they just felt that they've got so few resources available in their language um, and this answered their need perfectly. Then there are at least 50 very active reading platforms and apps where our books are republished um, in various guises. One of our guest organizations today will speak more to that. And then there are loads of adaptations that are done for other media. There's some story time channels where people read our books. There are narrations on YouTube. Um, people animate our books. People make audio books from our books. One of our books ended up as a gospel song recently. So the, um, the uses really are not, um, they have no limit. So today we've invited four organizations who use our books in their work to come and share their stories about how they use our books um, why the open license is important, etc. So like our books today, we're going to be traveling around the world. First, we're starting in Norway, in India, moving back to the UK, and we'll be ending in South Africa. I'll just run through the four organizations quickly and then introduce our first um, guest. So our first guest organization is Inclusive Books, based in Oslo, Norway. There are some of our books that have been translated into Norwegian. Then we'll be hearing from Story Weaver, based in India, a massive digital reading platform and much more, but they'll tell us all about it. Um, and the books that you see there on the screen are all book dash books that are featured um, on Story Weaver. Then we're going to Sarah um, at The Big Think. The Big Think is based in the UK um, and they're a, a um, I hope I say this correctly, but a values-based um, program, really, for, for schools about um, empowering children to recognize their own self-worth, et cetera. Um, and they use our books in their programs. And then we are ending up at the University of Stellenbosch's Hand Lab. Um, it's a university in the Western um, Cape, where we are also based, our offices are based um, in the Western Cape. And they do very interesting work with our books for the deaf community in the Western Cape. So um, without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I would like to invite Michelle Mpike to tell us more about inclusive books in Norway, um, what you do um, with our books and why you do it, and just yeah, share your story with us. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's really nice to be here. Um, thank you, Dorit um, and Julia, for inviting me. Um, and I'm really grateful, actually, that uh, Book Dash exists, um, because if Book Dash did, didn't exist, probably Inclusive Books wouldn't exist. Um, so Inclusive Books is a small publishing company which is registered in Norway. Um, I created it with the aim of diversifying the authors, stories, and characters um, in European children's literature and um, beginning in Norway where I was based at the time that the idea came to life and this was in 2018. Um, I was doing uh, research into children's literature for my own personal writing aspirations um, and I found that what I saw in Norwegian children's literature didn't reflect the diversity that I saw around me in Oslo where I was living. <coughs> um, and Oslo is Norway's uh, most populated and diverse um, city. Um, and, you know, outside of not reflecting Oslo, it didn't, I didn't feel like it represented, or the books represented the growing diversity in Europe as a region and also the diversity of the world. Um, and so in the end, I decided that I wanted to contribute um, to changing um, the lack of diversity through publishing um, of diverse children's books, but also through targeted conversations with, you know, uh, invested stakeholders in Oslo and as well as the rest of Norway. Um, so I couldn't personally write multiple books, um, nor did I have the resources to create books from scratch. So I decided to focus on translating existing books, and I was very grateful to find out about BookDash um, while doing research into how best to go about this. Um, I was first of all very pleased to find so many good quality, universally relatable books um, to choose from. Um, these are books about children, for children. Um, for example, Dumi Goes to the Park is as relatable in Norway as it is in, in South Africa. It's, you know, a classic childhood story about going out to play. Um, 
So I started to look into the licensing agreement and that was just another bonus for me because not only could I translate and reproduce the books, um, but we could make some adjustments where needed for cultural reference, which was quite important. Um, and additionally, um, South Africa is quite a diverse country. So the writing, the creative teams, um, the characters as well as the stories reflected a South African diversity, which, you know, in some ways is sort of reflective of, you know, the international diversity that we find in the world. Um, and also it explicitly includes, the books explicitly include children that are usually um, excluded from stories, both in South Africa and in Norway. Um, so, yeah, so, the, sorry. So um, it, was, it was quite a, a great find. Um, and I was very excited when I found out about Book Dash and it sort of gave me the momentum and the motivation that I needed to go forward with the idea. And it went from being sort of this ludicrous thing that I wanted to do to something that was actually tangible and could become a reality. Um, so in a nutshell, I found everything that I needed to start the company without compromising on quality or the aim um, with the li limited resources that I had at the time. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. And it uh, brings me great joy and pride to know that there are close to 400 books across Norway um, that have changed the reading experiences of Norwegian children and that those books come from South Africa. Um, and last year we hosted a seminar with uh, Norway's National Library um, on the subject of diversity in Norwegian children's literature. Um, and our co-host, uh, made a very explicit note, you know, to discuss with the audience that innovation happens everywhere. And this is a beautiful example of um, an idea traveling from, you know, the global south and um, being useful in the global north and that we should really try to find more solutions that can move in both directions um, and not just sort of looking for solutions in Europe and finding ways to implement them um, in, de in developing country contexts where sometimes they don't actually fit. Um, so had we needed to pay for rights and, you know, and source files, I really don't think I would have been able to uh, make inclusive books a reality, um, let alone publish five books. So now we have five books that have been published in the six months after I first registered the company. Um, since then, I have learned some very difficult lessons about running a business um, and running a business as a person in a foreign country. Um, so I have gone back to the drawing board to look at how best to run a company that can thrive and that can be sustainable. Um, but knowing that, you know, Book Dash exists makes it feasible for me to, to, um, to think about continuing and to, to expanding um, to other parts of Europe as I'd hoped. Um, sorry, let me just go back. Um, so I'm extremely committed to the concept and a huge part of why I still feel that this is possible is because of Book Dash, the quality of the books and the open license. I still plan to go beyond Norway and I hope that next time, um, I can, next time we meet, I can say that we have a footprint in Sweden and Denmark, for example, and also looking going from, because right now our books are published in print and it would be really great to also look at, while well, we're looking at ways in which to go digital. Um, and I have to say that people have loved the books and one of the best things for me has been to see customers um, paging through the books and watching them, you know, watching their faces light up as they read the stories or getting messages from parents saying, um, you know, my child is taking the book to bed every night. They just love Tabo so much. Um, so it's little stories like that, that even when things get a little bit difficult and um, they can be quite rewarding. Um, also, I worked with an extremely talented and dedicated translator who I could explain some of the more South Africa specific concepts um, and together we worked to make them fit for the Norwegian, um, uh, to make them a cultural fit for Norway without diluting um, the story. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's my presentation done. <laughs> um, but I think all in all, I'm just... Uh, I'm just really grateful that Book Dash exists. I would literally not have been able to even go forward from idea to, um, to actually implementing the concept without the open license. It's extremely expensive to pay for translation rights. It's extremely expensive to pay for the source files. And often, you know, those contracts are not in the favor of the publisher. It doesn't matter if you're trying to do something good for the society that you're in. You know, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's about business. 
um, and for the publisher to make money, which is completely understandable because, you know, publishers do need to make money. But having Book Dash meant that, you know, we could make this a reality with limited resources, but also with good quality. Thank you. Thanks very much, Michelle. I think um, it's so interesting to hear how several of the very kind of important principles in Book Dash um, feed into a venture like yours. Um, I think yesterday in the founders discussion, they made the point that um, they really didn't want to contaminate these beautiful books that are made by volunteers and, you know, to, to, to just get more books into the world. They didn't want to um, have to then have haggling around rights, you know, more, more than just the commercial aspect of it, you know, the money aspect of it. It's just like the volunteers who make these books, give them to the world then they must be as open as possible. And I think to restate something that you alluded to, which, um, which I think is really important, is the fact that there are no commercial restrictions either in our open licenses. It is the most open of open licenses, which means that people can literally download our books, translate them into any language and sell them like confetti and become millionaires. Not that that's ever happened, because I think people um, often don't really realize that this is possible. But it does open up possibilities for, for micro enterprises like yours at the moment, which will probably grow one day and take over Scandinavia by the sounds of it. But um, micro enterprises can actually use this fantastic content to make a difference in the communities where they operate, operate and, and get resources out in the languages that are that are useful um, and have relatable books. I think the, the other thing that you emphasize more than once is the fact that the books are relatable. So people from a diverse community, uh, the kids can recognize themselves in the pages and they can recognize the stories and they feel included. It's like a, a window into the, you know, uh, uh, into the outside world, but it's also a mirror that is um, very important for them to recognize themselves and, and be acknowledged. So thank you very much for, for sharing that story and, and um, all the best for inclusive books and for taking over Scandinavia with African children's stories. <laughs> thank you. Um, if you've got any questions for Michelle, you're very welcome to pop them into the, the chat and we can make sure that she um, gets to them towards the end of the session. But now we're going to move on to Story Weaver with Amna and Purvi. Um, so, Story Weaver, I don't, I'm not going to say much more, Amna, because I'm sure you're going to be telling us all about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for the lovely presentation. Oh, it was so personal. But trust us that even though we are a digital platform, a little far removed from the end user, but our story is as personal as Michelle's. And I think we are, we are also as inspired and moved by everything that you guys do at BookDash. So thank you, Dorette, Julia, and really the entire team of BookDash for giving us this opportunity. And uh, we'll be taking you through a small presentation, uh, which will uh, introduce uh, you to Story Weaver, a brief introduction for those of you who are coming in cold. And then we'll kind of showcase three examples of how the books at uh, BookDash have helped us support our work. So I will just present my screen. I hope you can see the screen. Uh, not yet. It? OK. There we go. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Great. OK, so uh, uh, just uh, like Dorette, you mentioned setting the context. So I think our journey is Bookdash and Pratham Books story. We were start right about at the same uh, juncture and with the same problem, uh, the one that the world has made an ambitious commitment to the goal of universal literacy by 2030, where uh, all children in the world will be able to read. But we all know that the global book cap uh, means that millions of children lack access to these critically needed reading resources, right? And at Pratham Books, which was a nonprofit children's book publisher set up early 2004, uh, this is the question that we most grappled with, that how do we address the inequities that exist in children's book, which means uh, not enough books and not enough languages, 
and very, very poor access. Uh, so our solution really, we kind of look to both open licensing and technology for the solution and StoryWeaver was born. Uh, StoryWeaver is an open educational resource platform uh, for multilingual uh, storybooks for children. It's a publishing model that uh, combines the power of technology and collaboration to hopefully help address the global book drought. Uh, technology helped us democratize access and uh, enable collaboration basically to overcome barriers, barriers of language, barriers of geography, ability, and I think most importantly, cost. Um, at the platform's core is basically a large repository of high quality, openly licensed books created by publishers from around the world, including BookDash. Uh, we have about 5,000 original books that are a part of our corpus with more getting added every year. And uh, these are all uh, level reading books uh, and uh, they are uh, richly illustrated and they, uh, they cater to a variety of genres and themes. Basically, we have early readers, books on social emotional learning, books uh, based on the concepts of science, tech, math, uh, but mainly books that are enjoyable to read. All the content uh, like Book Dash is available in one of the most permissive open licenses, the CCBY 4.0, which means that users can uh, consume, engage, use, reuse, or remix the content uh, as they please and for free. Uh, so this is just to kind of just show you the dramatic impact that open licensing helped us achieve, uh, which is that uh, Story Weaver, because it has simple tools embedded not only for consumption, but also recreation, this has helped us amplify the impact of the platform. And uh, as you can see, we started with 800 books in 24 languages, and this is actually the end of March 2020. And today we are at 21,500 books in about 249 languages. So that's the scale uh, we're talking about. And none of this, none of this would have been possible uh, without the, the, the synergies uh, that we have with the partners that we work with. So by openly licensing books and placing them in the public domain, making them available in a variety of formats that are easy to access, download, and share, uh, BookDash and other partners are helping us create more and more books in mother tongue languages and actually in a way helping us reinterpret libraries uh, for those uh, children who, who don't have ac access to the physical library. And uh, in addition, like Dorette and like Michelle, you said that these books are created by the publishers worldwide act as mirrors for the child who is underrepresented in the literature globally. Uh, and it also helps us add geodiversity to the content on the platform. From the book dash, we have about 200 storybooks, 10 languages. They have been read over a, uh, 1 lakh times and downloaded more than 10,000 times from the platform. Uh, so from here, we move into how open, basically three specific examples on how open licensing has helped amplify the impact and the usage of the content on Story Weaver. So this is one of our very favorite books. I'm sure it's one of yours too, Lara, the Yellow Ladybird. And clearly our community loves it too. Uh, as you can see, this book, when it was published in English, after that, it has really taken off thanks to the open licensing and the embedded tools on the platform. We now have 38 versions of this book in 32 languages on the platform. It has been read more than 7,500 times and it's been uh, basically read by users across 20 countries. So that's what uh, this does. And uh, basically, uh, even the images from the book have actually helped create 50 more books. So that's how viral it has become on the platform, really. Uh, the other thing on Story StoryWeaver uh, that we've been able to do is work with the open license content and serve it up in formats that cater to the need of the partners on the field. One such thing that we do is we version our books as read-alongs. Read-alongs are basically audiovisual storybooks that early readers can listen to as they learn to read. Uh, these books have subtitles that mirror the audio narration, uh, which help uh, the child uh, build language acquisition skills. Uh, so I have just put up one example. So this is why is Nita upside down? You can see how the read-along page looks. And these books are also uh, then uh, published as YouTube uh, videos on the Story Weaver channel. The books that are, uh, these books are aimed at the youngest of readers, the stories with, you know, repetitive sounds and words or books that are enjoyable to read aloud, as well as ones with 
either eye catching illustrations or a dramatic flair are the ones chosen so obviously uh, a few of the book bash titles made it to the curated list and recently uh, we have witnessed a huge spike in engagement uh, in both the read alongs and the youtube formats of the books uh, story weaver at story weaver we've also worked to develop early reading bilingual resources uh, especially in underserved languages this is to help the child transition towards the language of instructions this is particularly true in india and, and i'm sure true in africa as well and other countries of the global south um i would like to spend a few moments here on why bilingual books so bilingual books you know the obvious reason being that Uh, they come they come in handy as classroom aids for teachers uh, and there's a shared workspace between the teacher and the child whose home language is different from the language of instruction but it actually also helps teachers who feel unsure about their own level of english and have the text having the text in front of them makes teaching a less daunting task especially in the genre of picture books Uh, so we have had 30 versions of uh, book dash books as put up as bilinguals uh, in languages like sepedi afrikaans zulu etc and these have all been the english you know english sesotho and english eswana versions as you can see on uh, the screen and the third and the most amazing part is obviously how the open licensed books uh, have uh, actually developed wings and reached the last child Uh, so the first story that i want to uh, just quickly talk about is uh, one from uh, ethiopia so this is our partner uh, mesemer girma he's the foundation founder of the rasa bibi library he's basically trying to combat the shortage of story books uh, and the lack of easy access to resources in mother tongue languages for ethiopian students uh, basically he feels that uh, this perpetuates the vicious cycle of illiteracy and poverty so his team translates uh, book dash titles and other books uh, story books from story weaver into amharic and then uses them in their library programs the second example that you see on the screen is actually from india uh, this is a very very interesting example uh, this is an organization tamarind tree who works with the children from the tribal varli community uh, based in maharashtra uh, these children are all first generation learners and uh, what tamarind tree does is it works in the domain of open education and is currently integrating story weaver uh and obviously book dash content into their free online classes for children to mitigate the school closures uh, the books are being used uh, uh for reading practice building language skills and teaching concepts uh, uh in their regular curriculum as well so those were the three use cases and uh, the books are being used in many 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 more different ways and uh, since our goal is for every child to have a library of books in her language and maybe it's our shared vision of reaching books to the last child i think that's what makes this collaboration work so wonderfully so we are extremely thankful and humbled to host your wonderful books on story weaver and obviously the open licensing gives us the opportunity to build on them so as our website says thank you the world has more books because of you thank you so much Thank you very much, Amna. That was uh, fascinating, actually, to see how um, the open licenses of all your partner organisations and and ours um, allows for this remix of content and this content creation um, in home languages. I wanted to to comment that the thirty two languages that Lara, the Yellow Ladybird, has been translated into exclude South African languages. So. In, at Book Dash, we um, most of our books are available in the eleven official South African languages, but the thirty-two languages that you can read Lara the Yellow Ladybird on in Story Weaver are all um, non-South African languages. And I had a look at the range, and it is literally astounding. Languages that, to my discredit, I've never even heard of. Um, and those language communities can now read those books thanks to the fantastic tools. Um, and collaborations that are enabled by um, the very democratic platform that is Story Weaver. So thanks very much for that, Amna. Um, right, uh, we we are coming to the UK now with Sarah, um, who works for the Big Think, um, and and uh, 
as I said in our introduction, but some people joined after that, the Big Think is um, a whole school uh, well, well-being program. You'll say it better than I can say it, Sarah, but just to give people an idea. Um, it's a program that, that is uh, there to help children um, build positive relationships, basically, with others and with themselves. But I think I'm going to leave it at that, and you can rather tell us about it yourself. Um, and also how you use Book Dash Books and why you use our books in your programs. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Pangeli from the Big Think. Um, it's, we're from the charity, the Human Values Foundation, and it's been it's lasted for 30 years. And I was brought in as curriculum developer to um, overhaul the program and update it. It's originally written as a, a program promoting global peace. And it was in 2000 countries, including um, South Africa and India. And the original stories have become were quite stereotypical. It's a, it's a, a program based on stories as the central thing. I'm going to share you my um, screen, but also next to me, I have our favourite story in the UK as well. <laughs> so it's interesting. Here we go. Can you see the screen? Yes. Oh, done. Where's it gone? Um, uh, sorry. I can't stop linking. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so this is the big thing. It's a whole school, whole child values journey. And I've highlighted whole school because that's the element we were struggling with. And that's the element that the big um, book dash has really helped us make come true. So we, we are a relationships program in the Brit in Britain. Um, there's a new statutory guidance that relationships education um, has to be in place by September of this year. So it's a, it's a positive relationship building program that's interested in actions and choices that children make and also the social issues in the world around them and it's all underpinned by um, values. Yeah. Yes. Okay so we use these five human values truth, love, responsibility, community and peace um, and they're all interchangeable and we have 60 values that link underneath and these are some of the examples. So our program is 60 sessions that a primary school would use over a two-year rolling program um, these are our younger children, infant school characters. So we've brought the values to life with characters in stories. So these are our older primary school, uh, junior school children characters. So this is actually Malala, and this is um, a boy involved in the Manchester bombing. So they're usually something that's happened in the world that the child is concerned about. And we, we present it through a story written by 10 authors that we use. And so we, we were originally just doing a program for the older part of the primary school. And then on our pilot, schools kept saying they wanted the same for the children in reception and year one and year two from year four, from age four to seven. And we were thinking, I, I want, our stories are um, uh, oral stories written, uh, read aloud in an assembly. And we wanted to use um, picture books because I wanted younger children. I think picture books are the way forward for younger children. And um, my team said that we're never going to get any rights to picture books. And I was, I just kept insisting that we would find something. And then I, one day I came across Book Dash. And that's the way we've brought um, our program alive. We've, we've adapted these five characters, uh, their stories adapted from the older ones, but the rest of our stories come from Book Dash. So our love value of love, um, these are some of our other values that um, come underneath love. So it's inner happiness is brought to life by this story, My Inside Weather. Um, caring about nature is brought to life by the sea and sharing is brought to life by My Dream in the Draw. And it's the same for all our values. So we have a series of stories, some written by our authors and then complemented by Book Dash books. Um, and they love, they love this one, patience, perseverance and happiness. Um, for truth, we have these three stories. This is one, another favorite, curiosity, the best thing ever. And for responsibility, these are our three favorites. And community, um, 
we have helping our world um, we use the tiny seed for unity we use circles and for celebrating difference Lara the ladybird so in our in our actual sessions they look like this um, do you celebrate the differences between you and your friends so they have a big question and then they look at just one image from the story and we use sentence starters to open a discussion about the story and then they go on to look at the school story as a whole school assembly together we're really interested in um, listening to stories as a large group so it's all of um, age four five six and seven together and we find we thought the stories might be pitched a bit young but they absolutely love them um, and they're very relatable because we're talking about human values that we all have across the world and it's it's not an issue that they're from South Africa it's an, it's an absolute um, extra amazing thing and we, we talk about them as being a gift from South Africa and the children absolutely love the story of how they're made as well so it's all part of um, the values we're trying to promote that book dash also has the openness that you have is the openness that we want to have this is an example of a small rural school that we're working with we're mostly working in london schools but this is a school a bit further out um, and this is them sharing and talking about the books because we have a talking assembly and this is the delight on their faces when they're looking at the books on the screen Sarah, that was wonderful. I think Tyron, um, one of our Book Dash founders, just uh, wrote in the chat that it's very moving to see how the stories can actually inspire those kinds of conversations and and bring a bring about a sense of unity and self discovery and all the wonderful values that you are, are working with. Um, I had a question about what is happening to your program now with lockdown and schools not really being operational at the moment. Have you seen any of your programs being taken into, into homes or kind of still continuing, even though schools aren't completely really open? Maybe. Yes, we are, uh, we're starting to open next week on Monday. So we've written a special program called Circles of Care based on the values of community, appreciation, resilience and empathy. Um, those are not we're not those aren't story based they're talk dialogue we do a lot of dialogue circles so they're dialogue based but we're hoping from that we're getting a lot of interest in our actual program and schools that we are in we're in about 15 London schools at the moment and they all want the hard copy of in their library that's what they're all asking for so we're now investigating funding to have a small little section they absolutely love this size they love everything about the texture they want them in their hands they don't they don't we want them to experience it as a group online and then have it in their hands in the classroom to explore when they want to yeah so. that's great the best yeah. of both worlds we certainly mm. support the idea of hard copy books as well yeah. um so good luck with that i hope you find funding thank, thank, you. thank you for sharing your story thanks um right so uh thank you very much to sarah from the big think and we're on to our last guest organization bringing us right back to the western cape in south africa where julia and i and um, the rest of our kind of management and operational team also sits. Um, and this is the hand lab from the University of Stellenbosch. And we've got um, two team members who are going to be talking us through and presenting the work that they do. So in a nutshell, um, the, the hand lab at the University of Stellenbosch um, is a curriculum development unit uh, developing learning and teaching materials for schools in the Western Cape, uh, schools for the deaf, and um, they use our books in a very interesting way um, and they're going to be sharing their story with us. So thank you very much and welcome to Vanessa and um, Mareka and Marjan is the interpreter. You must just unmute. There we go, my son. Yeah, that was a bit of a struggle. Sorry. Okay, from Vanessa. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, we are very excited to share with you um, how we have been utilizing the program and all your books and how it's been completely different from each organization, how we are just also different in using it. Um, so you've basically already explained shortly what it is that we do, but my back, our background is that we are the US Hand Lab, University Stellenbosch Hand Lab, Hand Lab. 
And we, yes, we do develop material for the curriculum of sign language as a subject. Um, and we also work with the Department of Linguistics at the university. We have uh, developed, uh, um, we developed CAPS um, specific material for uh, learning and teaching support. And it's for home language in South Africa, where sign language is a child's home language. Our purpose is that, you know, we can empower deaf children, build knowledge and also um, build literacy levels in our deaf children of South Africa. As you know, South African sign language is not a written language, but a visual language. And for that, all of our material, all of our, all of the stories need to be a video recording um, with visual images. So what we've achieved so far is that um, we get our funding from the Western Cape Department of Education and then we create material that will be freely available to five public schools for the deaf in the Western Cape only. And this is sign language material for deaf children. So it's free for the five schools in the Western Cape. It, uh, it is used for um, the subject of sign language and learning sign language in schools for deaf children. It's not that we only focus on the Western Cape though, it's also because we have, we have schools in the rest of South Africa and we do want to make it available for free to them as well. But unfortunately, that is not the case. We have been in contact with the Department of Basic Education nationally and they found that many of our material um, are, are actually suitable for the rest of the country as well. And now other schools are available, are, are um, in a position to purchase these material uh, for themselves. So in, um, so uh, 26 schools in South Africa out of 36 will be using, our, are currently using our resources because we, they really do love the stories. It's very um, relatable for all of them. We've been um, using BookDash a lot. We were so excited to have it as an option and the open license has created so many opportunities for us. With sign language being a very recent development as a, as a, as a school subject, we need new, new images, we need new material all the time. So the, the drafting of the story, the creating of the images, the, the designing, etc., it takes a lot of time. So the process has just gone so much faster thanks to BookDash because everything has been created. All we had to do was adapt it and translate it. So the project time that it takes to complete a story has, has uh, decreased and we can distribute stories so much faster to our deaf children. And it's, it's taken away the, the complicated part of creating something from scratch. So in our curriculum so far, we have used book dash stories, about 26 book dash stories for the South African curriculum um, for sign language. We don't just translate it, we also adapt it because often it refers to things like, um, for example, um, a story where, where you're searching for the spirit of spring, if you look at that story, where the girl's name is um, Nandi, where she stands and hears two adults talking. So she'll talk about that. But with deaf children, that wouldn't be the case. They will say, Nandi sits there and she sees two deaf people or two adults talking. So the, the, it's adapted to, um, to a deaf uh, child's perception of how they communicate. So they don't hear, but they see. So we change the, the terms in that way or the, you know, some of the, the content. Then also in another story, we have a girl who walks in a forest. It becomes dark and she hears now she hears the drum beat. So we change it and we say, oh, the girl walks in the forest. She sees the fire in the dark and she can, it draws her attention and she goes and she walks there and she feels the, un underneath her feet the, the, the drums. So somebody is beating drums. So that's how we change it from hearing to rather seeing something and, um, and feeling a sound. So the character um, on the illustration will then change from this, to, um, not hearing to the, not to the ear, the hand on the ear, but to almost stand with the hands on the hips and say, hmm, I'm seeing something. So some of the images had to be adapted in that sense. With the book dash stories, we've been able to, um, to incorporate it into our curriculum uh, quite a bit. And 
Um, deaf children, unfortunately, don't have access to sign language online in South Africa for free at all. It's too expensive for them. We wish we could have something that is, um, you know, incorporated all the Book Dash stories that are available and have it available for free for deaf children. Because as you know, sign language is not an official language yet in South Africa, but it will be pretty soon. And then we will really need a lot more. I also want, or we also want to, or the, there's also quite a bit of feedback on the resources. The children then, have been telling us that the book, the stories about Zanele, for instance, about her life story really inspires them because, you know, as a disabled child, they feel disabled. They can really identify with a disabled character. So they really see that there's, you know, not just them alone who, who are sitting with all these challenges, but that there's also a character who has the same experiences and that no matter what your disability, you are able to achieve what you dream of. So it's really inspired a lot of the children, some of these stories. And many of Book Dash's stories have female role models that children can look up to, like Grace um, and... Michelle. Yeah, Grasa Michelle, sorry, and then, um, you know, quite a few of, of the famous women that you use in some of your books. And the girls, you know, they don't have, or the deaf children have a very narrow access to the world and knowledge of the world and knowledge of people. So these stories make them aware of this great big world that really is out there. And this is extremely relatable to them. It, and it gives them that feeling of, you know, I might be deaf, but I can still achieve so much in my life. And I can still do so much. So it, it does inspire them a lot. And I also wanted to show you a short video on how we, um, we've adapted a book dash story. Um, so I'm going to show you a very short video, if I may. I'm going to uh, do a quick screen share. Yes. Can you see yeah. it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> now you can play it and we should. Okay, see. it's playing now. Can you see? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Searching for the spirit of spring. The Cottonwool Doctor. Yeah, this is the story about um, our becoming a doctor. Yeah. Yes. The cotton wool doctor story. Mm. Together we're strong, but uh, Sisulu, Albertina Sisulu. Um, that one's title again, Miss Helen. Yes. Uh, this video I posted specifically for grade four to grade 12. And because most of the stories are used for FET phase. Um, yesterday, however, we recorded a new one about, about 18 stories for foundation phase. So I'm extremely excited to share the new ones as well with the deaf schools. The, the one that I'm really excited about is what is in the park, what is in the park, because it's a deaf girl with hearing aids 
and I'm very excited to see how the kids are going to react to a character that actually has hearing aids just like them. So yeah, I'm very excited about the new one, yeah. A tiny seed, wangare mutu, ma... Tiny seed, yes. Wakari matai. It's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> yeah. And Grasa's dream about Grasa Marshall. Mm, yes. Mm. Right, that's it. So basically that's what we do and um, the stories are available, you know, in sign language for deaf children to have access to them as well. And yeah, and that's what we do. Sure, I think um, everybody agrees as I've, I've been looking through the chats as well that this is really very inspiring um i think there's some golden threads that have come through all four guest organizations who's who've spoken and shared their stories with us about the power of the open license and what it enables them to do and i think those golden threads have to do with it's very easy to reuse so i think the ease of reuse is, is really important easy to remix the way that I'm not actually that's that's their phrase is remixing the, the content so that it is absolutely suited for your purpose and I think we see that in what the hand lab does as well. Um, the fact that you can do it quickly, it's fast, there aren't months of no cost. So I think all those factors make it so powerful and it's and then the fact that it can be adapted for your own context and own needs. Michelle spoke about how some adjustments had to be made uh, for the books to be really understandable and relatable to kids in Norway. Um, and you can do that without, you know, protracted um, negotiations or getting permission or anything like that. Um, and then for me, really very um, poignant is the fact that our books, because of, I think, the passion that goes into creating them, um, can be at the same time used as mirrors. In other words, they are kids can relate to them. They see themselves, like um, for the, um, like Vanessa said, to me. Um, I think the girl's name is to me in the park who's got um, a hearing aid. For instance, they can recognise themselves. But also um, a window on the wider world. For instance, the inspiring historical figures that um, that the Hand Lab has has adapted into sign language for for many of the of the kids who wouldn't have had um, access to those kinds of stories before so um i just want to thank everybody for joining us in a bit but i think it's really so interesting and very very humbling to see where our books end up and i think for all our creative contributors who tuned in for the session um i hope you feel incredibly proud of yourselves and of the gifts to the world that you make when you see where they end up and how they're used um, and for what incredibly positive purposes in all four cases of our guest organizations. Um, thank you very much. Um, I just want to check, Julia, are there any questions in the in the chats that we haven't responded or, or they're all just, um, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think, think everyone's just busy. Positive feedback. And the only thing I think I want to say very quickly is that we do very little actually to to make this happen. Really all we do is put is is the decision to license our work in, in the way that we do and, and make it easily accessible and findable on the internet. Um, and I think everyone else here that has presented has come across our work and found it and then put their effort and resources into reaching more children. So from Book Dash's side, this is a very low maintenance way to, to have this incredible reach and impact. Um, and I just think that that, if, yeah, 
I think that really speaks to to why open is powerful as well. We don't. It, it's not hard work for us. Yes. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for our four guest partner organizations for sharing your stories and for making us feel very inspired on a Wednesday. Um, and good luck with the good work that you do. Uh, we'll be sending more stories into the world, doing our part on that end, and you'll be working with them in the wonderful ways that you do. Thank you for all our, um, our participants who tuned in and commented and who enjoyed the session. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.